how highly do you rate him as a four? I, I don't know if there's many that would top him. I, I think that, like, on any given day, you could take him above anybody else in the pool. Like, he can't play better than anybody else in the pool. Um, and he's always a key part of their wins. He's the one that moves around, makes stuff happen, while Kyle's kind of, you know, more directing the action. And uh, I, I think that there's games where he turns into like the next three or even sometimes being, you know, eclipsing them and moving up to the two position in terms of farm. Um, so it's something you got to look out for if you're at LGD forever young, for sure. Okay. Into the draft we go then. And uh, no massive surprises. Um, the Wyvern really has Ten been banned an awful lot recently, Jack. Last just, two, last two tournaments online qualified, everyone just getting rid of him. It's a, it's a strong, very strong overall hero. I mean, he got nerfed a little bit yesterday, but this hero has some lane presence. He's got wave clear out of the support position. He's got tremendous teamfight presence, obviously, with the ults, and he just does a lot of things, and a save. There are very few support heroes that have that diverse of a toolkit and skill set. I mean, you know, maybe his mana costs were a little bit high. Maybe he has a long cooldown early in lane, so it's not as strong, but the hero just does so many things. Mm. I can't believe they didn't ban out the IR of the Tiny. They're, they're trading basically here and saying, run it against us, we're taking Beastmaster, which is the other hero that's so strong right now Ten in this patch. Remaining. Well, that one, and then also Brew feels like at times he can be really effective. But... Yeah, Brew's been on the rise, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's also a complexity. I mean, you want to talk about complexity is kind of like innovations. I mean, they use Brewmaster quite a bit around the time of this new season. Um, They use CK like you know, with the Blink as well, not to just be able to close yeah. with the illusions. So yeah, there are other things on, that they brought in. Played an awful lot. They're going with the Conquer. That's uh, one that we already pointed out as being a staple melons hero. Well, I, I'm still waiting for the Ten tiny. I feel like remaining. if you just take it here, right? I mean, is there any reason not to? If he Five roars you, you like remaining. not even roared for any time afterwards immediately. <laughs> The, the CK, I mean, the Beastmaster felt like a kind of a block pick as well. Like, you see them take away the, the Nature's IR. Prophet. Um, Complexity plays that tremendously well. Like, when they when they want to play a fast-paced game, and, uh, if, you know, Kyle, you can see usually on, like, some kind of support with Wave Clear, but they fight so much as a Jakiro coming out. Mm. Like, if that's played, I mean, that's a flexible position hero, but if it's played in Kyle's hands, like, he usually ends up getting very farmed because he participates well in fights, and he cleans up all the, like, unsafe farm so no one else has to while you still maintain the lane pressure. Yeah, they only usually play this offline. Or... remaining. Uh, on Kyle, so it's either Kyle's support, but he also Five plays the Kunker as lot. His brother Zifrik does play Kunker, but not as much. So two relatively flex flexible picks, because it's going to make LFY think, isn't it, Lyrical? They're going to be thinking, okay, yeah, the Kunker's on Kyle, and then they go, oh, Jakiro, oh, that means that's both their supports. But actually, Moo can play the Jakiro pretty well. Yeah, I think that it still signals what they want to do with their draft a lot, but you already knew that this is what complexity we're going to yeah. want to do early on anyway. So um, it just means that they have more options to counter out what it is that LGD is going to take here. And as far as like Beastmaster games go, um, it's also a pretty good combination of heroes to take because you can get the boat buff to help you know keep people alive if the roar comes out. Um, also, Ice Path is pretty good for counter initiation. Dia but right now for LFY, uh, I'm going to go back in for the Earth Spirit. And I, I really like this decision. Just give something that Afu can actually make a presence around the map early. Felt. Yep. His most played hero in the last. And again, one that you boys picked out. Signature hero for Afu. I mean, I just you know can't forget Ten those plays at TI, the, um, whether it was the Age of Steel or just feeling like he was playing this hero almost Five differently from everyone remaining. else. Like, mm. he, he wouldn't have items or he'd be under farm sometimes, but his whole yeah, job would just be tracking guys. people down and chasing them down for his team. And it was just incredible to watch him execute on this and Night Stalker, among other things, during TI. And I feel like it's sort of a return to it, because you talked about those qualifiers and some of the inconsistencies, and I think this was something that was banned out a lot in China as well against them. Um, and so it, now the actually being able back. to get it, it feels like this is one of those heroes that enables them to uh, really go off. They're going to ban out the, the timber. timber Saw. Seen as one of the uh, better hero against uh, something like a Beastmaster. Um, also, like... They could potentially a hero that L, that L LFY, LFY takes a lot more. Other teams back. probably is like a Medusa, um, which is also kind of seen as you know, does fairly well against the Beastmaster at some point. You don't let them have the. I already banned out that Sand King a lot earlier as well. Ten seconds against remaining. complexity. Thinking about their next pick. 
I feel like taking an off laner here if they remaining. wanted to run it that way, if they want to run the Jakiro for Kyle, could be quite strong since they uh, you know, already know what the enemy off laner would be. And again, you see some of the kind of band priorities, like uh, Complexity wants to deal with, don't, doesn't want to deal too much with uh, mobility or vision for the most part, because that compromises of what they like to do, which is be able to find these edges and, and hey, run at people. Hey, there it is. I'm so shocked that they gave it to him. This is like, it, Limp to me is one of the best tinies in the world. Yep. And the fact that this hero is like banned out against teams that don't even have a particularly great tiny player, and then you give it to him, they've got to have a plan. And well, Benj? They locked that in pretty quickly, so it was almost like they knew what was coming. I think, like, what would be a good answer to the status resistance stuff? They do use the Avengers as a core, by the way. One of the differences. Yeah, having, having Monet in a kind of more yeah. self-sufficient hero. Um, we, we've seen them also kind of innovate out of some of the offlane picks. I think huh. they were among the earlier teams to use something remaining. like... Uh, Zeus or an Elder Titan as much as they did on uh, that offlane role. Fourth pick It means Jakiro will go in the offline. Yeah. Um, I think that this really works well. Uh, it just enables Tiny so much, right? Yeah, it's no, the I mean, tiny, it's the Tiny IO combo from two, three years ago or whatever it was when it went on the rampage for about six months in, in one of the patches. Wyvern already banned out. They're going to take the Disruptor. So it's another good answer, but it's still a little bit sketchy because, like, mm. you can have Kunkka X torrent somebody and then the relocate happens and they can pretty much kill everybody. Save wise, I don't really know. I mean, I guess you could have. The Avenger can't even swap because she's going to be the core, really. Yeah, where's that Disruptor Five going as well? Remaining. This, this is odd, isn't it? Afu has played this as well, oh, I guess for like fairly recently, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's going to be for DDC. Hmm. Neither of them have played in the last three months. Turn to Dibble, I, mean. I think they just needed an answer for the relocate. And so they want to, if the relocate comes, they disrupt the static storm right yeah. on top of them. So the Beastmaster is in flames. The offlane. Mm. Ten seconds remaining. Poor Vengeful Monet, I guess. So the hero for them. Five seconds remaining. Some of his signatures are still in there. There's the the Medusa, yep. um, who's who came on strong for like a little bit, but then quickly got nerfed. There's still the DK, DK. which is like yep. the, the staple signature hero for him. It's really tough against an IO tiny lane, though. You so take a serious. necro in there. Is I think Death Prophet might be a decent pick. It's something that like could maybe let you survive the lane because I think even Necrophos, if you get tossed back under tower, it could still. Enough diversity. One of those two, though. Mm. Yeah, this this uh, this tiny I'm excited to see because again, like another team. major change to him, and he hasn't been let Phantom through. Oh, a PA this time round. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I, I guess not in Super's top ten from the last three months. Final pick. Where are they going? Uh, they need a chessy hero here. Remaining. They would have wanted the CK, I guess, Five so that's banned. Remaining. Yeah, maybe a Juggernaut. Oh, that could be the other thing. Mm. It's still tough. But I, I think that, honestly, it's, it, with Tiny and Io already there, this is going to be enough. Like, they can burst through that PA really easily. There's um, a Brewmaster still in the pool. I, I, yeah, there is a Brew. They feel that that's a decent yeah. pick. The PA is interesting. Again, like, you know, being able to get to the back lines and really kill the IO. This is another hero that's feels like it's been buffed in terms of talent, but we haven't we, talents, we haven't seen it too much uh, in competitive play just yet, but promising in a lot of ways. With that armor reduction you have like even better roaching potential early on if you do go for that Desolator build. I'm still feeling though like it's still, uh, I, I want to see how they lane it all, because I feel like PA against Tiny, uh, tiny IO in the mid can just get yes, destroyed yes. unless they stick somebody there. Whoa. What? Okay. Is this a core Kunkka? Uh, no, it, Moo is playing Tons. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so Chessie's going to pick up the Jakiro this time. Okay. Well, it's not something he's played a huge amount of, but I guess it's probably okay. I'm not the biggest fan. I believe in that more than the PA. I'm going to still stick with uh, complexity. I think that the, the tiny IO. Um, is enough. I think that they have something up their sleeves with the tusk, um, and that is 
going to be enough. Like he's going to be able to set up kills around the map along with the Kunkka. I'm going complexity. Tusk, okay. another hero whose stock has been on the rise. I'm also kind of a believer in the tiny, just haven't seen it, having seen it the last few days. And uh, you know, with the new patch again, like this will be a time to evaluate it with fresh eyes. But I like complexity draft as well. Hmm. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I don't know if I'm all on board with these thoughts, but nevertheless, <laughs> there's a Jakiro in the game, so what the hell? Who cares? It's going to be fun with a two-headed dragon. Uh, talking of two-headed dragons, let's head back to your commentary team. We've changed things up. Two heads are better than one, so we've got Toby One alongside Blitz. I'm not quite certain exactly which head's which. Either way, I'm Toby One. This is This is Blitz. What's up? <laughs> I had a comment for that, but just like, let's cut it. Let's let's cut let's it. Keep going. We, we, keep going. We'll move on. We'll move on. I was gonna reply, and I was like, I'm being baited here. <laughs> the last time people, a person made jokes like that, I was here in Shanghai. He didn't make it home. <laughs> well, let's let's leave the whiteboard behind. Uh, let's talk about the game, man. Complexity versus LFY. The drafts have come through. Uh, LFY willingly giving IO and Tiny over to Complexity, while we have. The Tuscar last pickup. Do you think LFY knew what they're getting into? Uh, I mean, if you watched Complexity play, and even like through somewhat rigorous checking, like you just open up their Dota buff page, the fact that all of their Twitters they keep posting photos of Tiny, like they really like this hero. If it wasn't enough that you saw, like I, I saw them like all post about it, they really like the hero. They think it's broken. It's one of them's favorites. They were one of the original Tiny IO teams. Mm -hmm. Remember, they almost got to TI with it. Yes. History could have been changed completely in the NA quals. DC might not have gone second. They played that Tiny IO game against DC, and they, like, barely lost. Like, this is their hero in the clutch. Game five. This is the hero that they're going to pull out. Well, do we look at it from the flip side then? Okay, Complexity are comfortable with it. They've publicly said this. If LFY can slap them down... Is that the better way to do it? Like you were talking when we were over in the green room before, like like how do you actually counter this tiny? Doom goes off in, in a matter of seconds, but Disruptor at least sticks around a lot longer. That was like, my suggestion. Yeah, it was your suggestion. I said Disruptor would be good because like Black's suggestion was Enigma, but like getting Black Hole off is considerably harder than getting a Disruptor uh, ultimate off. But yeah, uh, I mean he's still pretty good. I think like Roar does nothing against him. Mm -hmm. uh, the Roar is not very annoying. The stuns that. LFI do have, they don't have that constant ability on top of them, but you know, there's something interesting I want to bring up. If you know somebody's going to pick something and you're able to beat it, it's always like a weird position that it puts you in. Because if you lose to it, everyone's going to call you an idiot. <laughs> yep. Because they're just like, well, you knew they were going to do it, but if you beat it, you're just like, you open up a whole lot for the yep. rest of the field. Uh, it forces like a little bit of doubt on the side of complexity. I wonder if it also changes the meta as far as the tournament moves forward. Like, like we looked at Tiny appearing in a lot of the games this morning on both sides of the group. Uh, what happens if LFY is just like, hey, guys, we actually found a way to make it so this guy isn't a pain in the ass anymore. Yeah, it, it, it just makes it every easier for everyone to play. And that's the cool thing about Dota is like you have access to very similar information, right? Because all the teams, what they do is they'll watch the games and they'll say like, this worked against it, this didn't. Yep. We had a lot of success. They didn't have success against it. Like. We saw that Tiny was beatable using this formula. Mm -hmm. And once you start to like develop that, that's how like you know counters get developed, just because like you put heroes through rigorous tests. And that's when like you move on to the next hero that actually replaces them and yeah, exactly. so on and so forth. And it's just like a huge cycle. Although like Venno was like never cycled out. Just like the one hero that But he was he was buffed up too easily. Mm -hmm. That hero was just like I'm glad that this patch is what it is. Hey, his life's a lot harder on the die side now the bounty room's been moved. Then again, the bounty runes are worth less with the patch that came out just last night. So what? The bounty rune still on, dude. Mm -hmm. The bounty rune's great. You still like it? I love the bounty rune. As a support, like, you're a poor guy, can't really afford much, you, like, found it. The thing about a bounty rune, Toby, is, like, when you have nothing else going for you, you're happy to see a bounty rune. Like, but now, it's but nice. now you don't get as much experience. Like, yeah, it's, but not it's not worth as much. It's like the intrinsic value of, like, clicking a gold coin makes you feel good internally. You're just like, wow, I got it. It's like... Well, okay, well, Zeus gets to do that all the time with his taunt anyway, or we just start pl playing Super Mario. Nah, but it's different. It's it's like, you know, your support, your life sucks. Like, you have to support people that, like, especially in a pub game, you might not necessarily like everyone that you have to play with, uh -huh. and everyone's screaming in your ear about stuff, and, you know, you, you don't get to be a part of kills. You die in, like, two shots to this, like, 
pebble man that like chucks trees over your head. Yep. And then there's that one call who's just like ripping you and you one for it. Yeah. All. He's just like you know all the wards are out of stock, but you know he's pinging like we need wards. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, then you find a bounty rune, and all of that becomes okay. It's like the soccer mom equivalent of wine club. Like, it, you know, you just have a bunch of kids kicking and screaming in the minivan, and you just, you know, you, you get a little bit of time to yourself, and it's nice. What, and, and, and your mom's just there clucking a bottle of red wine, and yeah, like, this, this is the way you get through kids club? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you just need something in life to keep you going. That's the bounty rune. And... I, I really wonder what what your family was like growing up on that front then. That's great, man. Did you actually dr drive your mother to drink? That'd be... Well, this is like some weird, dark conversation now. It, it really is. It really is. All right. I guess we'll reconnect in a second. At least we have our food back. We're <laughs> still waiting on Beastmaster to return. He'll get back here. Uh -oh. That hero, by the way, is... It's aces. It's aces. So you're okay with LFY picking it in the foot because you're like raw doesn't do anything in this like against like the tiny or whoever. Uh, and they first picked him. They first picked him in the draft. Yeah, but conceptually, like the hero is still very strong. Which which ways like like do those strengths actually work against complexity in this game? Mm, the, I think the vision game is always really nice uh, for the tiny or for the beastmaster in general. Like you get to control the Roshan area very easily. I know China teams are really good about vision. Uh, I think it was actually like Kyle that told me once, he's like, Dota always boils down to like two things uh, as it's like the meta develops. So vision and stun. You need to be able to stun people. And I think a lot of the Chinese teams follow that. Flaw. Got a lot of stuns, they got good vision. Plus the Beastmaster like synergizes nice with uh, the disrupt. Fly Hawk in overbound and then you just like glimpse somebody back, it's nice. Do, do you like the changes to Call of the Wild? Um, now, now they're merged together. I mean, it it continues like it makes the hero a little bit weird, because the hero was clearly lacking something. And what it did best is that it shoves in the waves, and in that regard, they made that even better, right? Because you just have an extra neutral that shoves in the waves. It's like you you essentially get a helmet down. You get like two thousand gold item per free. Yep. Still two thousand gold. Yeah, it's two thousand gold on the dot. So like you just get a two thousand. Uh, gold item for free added to one of your uh, spells that I mean you're gonna get anyways which is kind of weird right because most of the time like that's why I think they buffed axes because you you want to force people into a position where it's like complicated whether or not you get one or the other but like yeah. everyone's gonna get max call of the wild yeah just to get that extra one that was it uh, in the older patch it was only one point up in axes everything else went into like call as well as in a beast yeah, there was like the common build is like zero four four one. Just like didn't even get a level of access sometimes. In this game, like I suppose he's got a decent amount of synergy when you had both the VS aura plus the Beastmaster aura up. But can you keep up with the PA? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the big question for this game because at the end of the day, like you have a bunch of melee or melee like cores, and then you've got this like Benj, which interesting to me as a core has always been pretty interesting as a core but they're gonna just try to run them over like this the one thing every team should know about complexity is like they come to fight it's been a while since we've seen them mm -hmm. like Dota's been sadder for it because they're a fun team to watch like they're they're gonna run at you they like enable or they embody that like more than anybody is super succinctly puts PC boom poop boom I, I always enjoyed uh, the complexity, the meta breaks, like the when they're when they're able to find something which is just easy to manipulate. What was it the Axe Wyvern oh, they did with, cool. with the Ancient? That was at Epicenter. It that, was when they first revealed that. Yep, that was uh, when Liquid were having their run, and I think it was that, that was the, that was the newbie Liquid finals, right? Yeah, that the was first newbie Epicenter. Liquid. And then uh, I think that was the one where Kuro Game Five he did AA to counter the Alk. Uh, I I think I think my favorite moments from that taunt was actually Achuan moving on his lion all the time. Like, played, that was wonderful. He played Enchantress that last game. Yeah, we actually have. Uh... All right, so I, I was about to say the wonderful things about Afu and uh, go for him on Chuan, but we're actually going to go to a short break as um, we'll try and find out what went boom and then make it go on boom. We'll be back.
That was nice of you. And we're back. Things that went boom were boomed and then replaced. LFY vs Complexity, game number one of this two game series. And our second series of the day. I'm Toby One here with the amazing Blitz. Amazing. That. Knowledgeable. The main reason that Storm Spirit continues to be nerfed when you jump from mid lane to bottom lane and get a kill without even actually having to use a, like an ability apart from ball lightning. Man, everyone. You, you know, you, know that, you are the catalyst back. for that nerf, right? Give that hero back. <laughs> it's been like two years that I've had to like wallow and play other heroes. It's finally good again, and then it immediately gets nerfed. <laughs> What's wrong with people? <laughs> hey, we, we had a successful Storm Spirit game already today, right? We did, and so we had an unsuccessful one too, so it all works out. <laughs> that way. And, well, if he has too many su successful games, it's just going to be, be balanced completely again. So exactly. let's get our minds back into this game. Z Freak and Limp running that mid lane duo, Io and Tiny together. They're already playing around with Super, tossing him in deep. Actually, a bit of damage. With the body block, they can do a little bit more. He wants but it again. Uh, have they got it again? Yeah, they do. Got to pull him away from the creep. There's the other toss back with the creep wave. Super, real issues, bailing out. Z Freak will take two range creeps and try and just zone him out. And uh, well, mid lane, difficult for PA. He's trying to make it so that Super can't self. And he's doing a very good job of that, on top of the fact that Super... Oh, that's self? Well, he's... Oh, he actually cancels it yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. And this is why he did it. He's like, oh, well, maybe I can get it off. No. And look at Super. He's going to TP to the lane with no Sal, 200 health, and his game's just like straight up, it feels ruined right now. How is this blade meant to work anyway? Like, you, you have Afu. Like, we... We've, you can praise Arthur's Earth Spirit all, all you want, but what does he do to actually change this lane matchup? Well, like, the, you, you purposely gave my Otani, there has to be a way to win the lane. The thing is, is like, normally when you play this uh, Earth Spirit, like, it's a kill hero. You want to set up, or at least be extremely annoying. But the downside is, is like, because the Wisp is just going to sit there, Z Freak already has a full bottle, it's not really as necessary uh, for complexity. Like, there's no rotations that they're making, they're welcoming action. They feel like they're going to win the fights. Uh, and they most likely will, like, when it gets into these two-on-two -two engagements. And that's why Afu is saying, like, this is not exactly what was planned. Not really able to go down there. Bottom lane, I guess, is the best place that he's going to play around. But even then, apparently this Tusk off lane is quite strong, too. Apparently for now. Mu's going to go into the trees, try and hide away from the invisible Earth Spirit. I'm about to catch him off guard. And, uh, well, there's already your first little kick. Rolling ball to forward, Mu. Dropping low, he will really get back to the tower, you. and actually with the shots, he holds Afu in range of the tower. Inflamed able to grab the aggro of that, so uh, the tower hits will not bring down Afu, allows him to salve up and continues the hunt for Mu in the tree line. I was thinking about it, but that was pretty close, as Mu gonna pop his own salve now, and uh, meanwhile, I mean, all three cores are actually doing pretty okay, even with all the shenanigans that happened with the Phantom Assassin. He has kept not. up in CS, he's barely behind the tiny, uh, Chessie, meanwhile, up at top, not having the easiest of times as Venge getting more or less tree farm. And uh, I thought the laning configuration would work in Complexity's favor, but so far it's been pretty decent. It seems a bit odd though, like with some of the lanes, like, okay, you're running the Jakiro, you're running the Tusker. Uh, are you happy seeing these guys as calls? Like, is this meant to give you that big power shot going into the mid game? Or, or at least like once you cross that 10 minute mark? Yeah, definitely, but... I think laning-wise, it's going to matter quite a bit how the laning phase shakes up. Just because, uh, once again, Limp tries to go for the toss on Super, this time unsuccessful. And now that Super's got the level of Phantom Strike, it's considerably harder to kill him. Super is just spamming out daggers, doing a very good job of CSing as up at top. <sighs> yeah, Chessy. Well, he's locked in the wall, but man, they didn't really have much more to give. They've got like a brother in each lane. The synergy isn't there. Oh, they're going again on this mid super. Real issues for him, a cycling dagger. Trying to slow down Limp so the tether can't connect with the balls. And the damage from Limp will be there. Able to catch him underneath the tower, Z Freak and Limp does the job. Yeah, and they needed something like that just to kind of instill the fear in him. And this is a lane that you often see lots of kills happen because it snowballs so fast. There you go, the brothers are both in the same lane now. You are going to miss on the torrent from Kyle, so DDC can try and turn this around. Afu comes in, they're going to glimpse back onto Kyle. 
and then lock him inside the wall. There's not a lot Z-Free can really do to save him. He's going to tether up forward, but this is really just delaying the inevitable, or is it? The Tyrant Kyle needs more space. The damage is there from DDC. Working with Monet, they're able to get that return kill. So it's a one for one, even if you are trading your mid for a support and a heavy and he rotation. back once again, going to get hit one, two times by the tower, but limp. That any other follow-up stun, they're not willing to commit the stun to that. Probably wouldn't have gotten the kill, and so things are going to reset a little as Limp going to start making his way forward. Stun's going to connect. They got extra health. If only they could get that toss off. You had already the torrent coming in, and now Z Freak and Limp heavily under the tower. Z Freak is taking so much damage. The hit from the tower will kill him off. Limp will retreat. And that perfect timing for the kick just really interrupted. The torrent was right on the money for the toss back position. Limp's gonna go for it again, and he's just gonna get the kill. He pops a stick, has the mana for it, and Super gonna get soloed out by the Tiny. Even better for Limp, not having to share the XP or the gold with Z Freak, a little bit greedy. Is, is, that, a, is that a math problem there? Not on, not uh, understanding the amount of damage coming out of the Tiny? Yeah, he probably thought like, oh, he doesn't have mana, but Limp had just enough uh, stick charges. It doesn't cost as much, only 230. Probably thought he was probably in the range of survival anyways, but it does go down and Super now has died twice. This lane, which looked kind of promising for him in the beginning, Toby, is now snowballed out of control the other way as, well, I'd like to really see Moo start making his rotations around. Yep. Can't imagine Tusk really needs that much farm comparatively. To the going heroes. again on mid. Inflame is going to move up through the mid, uh, through the bottom lane. Coming up the river, so they do have the raw available. Afu with the kick out to catch out both. They're trying to focus that IO for the oh, moment, the but the top trying to pull it back in range of the tower and the free wave. The shards from Moo locking in LFY, so IO will die, but they'll bring down both the Beastmaster and the ES4. While up on top lane, Chessie's on the run, more. but it's dropped the wall. It's gonna hold it in there. Super moves underneath the tower. Super will go down. The aggressive tosses out, Kyle is still alive, makes a break for the tree line, the observer ward is there, but DDC still does not have that vision, the brother comes to hold the brother's hand. Together they move forward towards DDC, where's that torrent? It doesn't connect. Good. It's still, that mid-rotation by Mu, we were talking about it, this hero doesn't need a lot of farm, and the better part about it too, Toby, is that the Beastmaster's rotation was forced out as well, and so he didn't. they didn't even gain anything out of it, they lost the Beastmaster, Mu was able to make the even more successful rotation, which further adds to this uh, Tiny's net worth. 3,800 to his name already. The Beastmaster, who is tops for LFY, going down at the same time. Very successful swing of events for them so far. Is, is this that full moment where you, you're like, okay, LFY, like you're mentioning it, like either you can look like a fool or look like a genius if you can, if you can beat it. I mean, so far, the answer isn't quite there for them, but of course, they have done such a good job of the Jakiro as we're going to see this replay here. The shards were so good, Toby. We'll come back live to watch Moo being initiated in the bottom lane. They do have that extra stomp. Nothing like an extra neutral for Inflame to bring down Moo, and uh, they'll work together now with Monet and Afu to add some pressure on the bottom lane. One of the better creeps that he can grab with the Centaur being able to follow up with the stun. Very nicely done, but still not the target that you necessarily want to go for as Limp continues to farm out. Now Chessie's got some space in this top lane. You notice that he's shoving in the wave so that he can start getting some of those liquid fire stacks on the tower now. Yep. Keep that pressure up, even if he doesn't uh, prioritize it. With a 2-1-2, Monet, Shard's just holding him and forcing him to take extra damage on the bot lane. Yeah, there's that shove you're talking about, DDC. He's getting a little bit of extra experience just sitting in the in the sides, but there's not a lot he can really do against the Jakiro. Doesn't have a friend to help get that get that kill. But again, we see that rotation in towards mid lane. They really want to do something about this tiny. Oh, with the invis rune, they might be able to do so. But he understands. If you go on the tiny, the whistle will be there. He knows that there's a decent chance that Z Freak's gonna go for the stack instead. Does have the Call of the Wild up in just one second. We'll have the Roar available to him. And with the balls connecting, I think Z Freak should know about this. He's pinging yeah. like crazy. They're just body blocking up the stack for the moment. This is, this at the end of the day, is what the Invis Rune turns into. Kyle, smoke top, runs over, but it's already too late. The Tiny has blocked the camp, forced the attention of Z Freak at least. Yeah, and now he's actually going to go for the Courier Snipe. 
Okay, not going to happen. The courier, in fact, reveals him and allows Chessie to back up towards the tower. He couldn't just walk over and roar. They want mid, though. He's waiting for Super to edge himself a little bit forward. And Limp trying not to give this away. This was a commitment from Kyle. If he does get the X, it should be a kill. Trying to give him the move speed bonus. Doesn't happen. Afu's there. Super's Observer ward, uh, was able to watch the movement of Kyle. I don't know if he actually got there onto the cover of smoke or not. I think he made it through the smoke, but I'm pretty sure that Super just is kind of being attentive to that situation right now. Mm -hmm. They didn't know where the gank was going. Monet was also playing a little bit uh, passively at bottom lane just in case. Oh, a dire scan is not going to be able to connect. They're just hovering around up on the top, but not really forcing the issue that hard. Chessie. It's just in flame up there. Get axe. There's just no opportunities at the moment with the with the rotations. I say yet for both sides, but once once you have IO level six, this seems to be a lot easier. Yeah, thanks for change. complexity. And look at how poor Super is right now. Got 2,200 net worth. He's getting <laughs> catapults chucked at his forehead. <laughs> oh, they're gonna go again. X mark spot and torrent, trying to keep in flame off the back of Chessie, who now puts down the ice bars. Doesn't hit on the beast master, however. But they need that damage, the glimpse away. It's gonna at least send one back out again. That's gonna be the Iris Storm. DDC cuts the fight in half, and Kyle caught on the wrong side of the tracks. Now Limp and Chessie retreat back to their tier one tower. Limp already with that blink dagger 10 minutes in. But this is not the fight that uh, Complexity were really looking for, and we do see that counter to the IO maneuver and to any kind of TP support to come in when you've got that either snap for tether or just the the glimpse back. The glimpse being one of the better ways to deal with him, but at the same time, you really need to start seeing Kyle land some of those torrents. So far, haven't really connected for him just yet. A little bit off on the timing. If they're going to get kills, that's how it's going to happen as Kyle going to throw out the bow. Oh, this torrent of bow combination is going to hit on Afu with the macro fire. He has to sit there and tank it. Even the dual breath. I don't know if that's going to be enough damage. Okay, it will be. With that last attack and, like flying down towards him, they'll find the kill. But Monet trapped inside the shards. DDC walls are back up again. Monet wants to get back out of here, but the snowball pulls him out of the wall and the relocate, bringing Limp into the fight. Chessie has himself a double kill, and you know they're going to go for more Zebra. Five seconds will be too long for him to escape from this extra set of blasts that was there. But the dual breath is out once more. The roar onto move. He can just tank through this X mark. The spot in flame. Got nowhere to go. He pulled back into Chessie. But then again, maybe that works for him. No, it doesn't. Chessie with the triple kill. Able to oh, tank DDC. through it all. And now DDC. He'll find the kill. Thanks to that Thunder Strike. Carl's looking for a little bit more. But is it going to feed the support? No, it won't. Limp has arrived. The kick won't come through. The Limp tree. a little bit late. He tosses the tree forward to bring down DDC. And Kyle. Kyle he'll barely survive Z Freak. Medic on the front line. What a mercy player. And this is exactly what you expect in a complexity game. High octane action. Both teams just willing to fight nonstop. That's super. He's again. getting low. He's going to go down. Oh, boy. He cannot catch a break in this game, Toby. <laughs> is he level? He's level six. He's against what? a level ten and a level eleven, like gank heroes. He has less XP than his disruptor, and I think this should kind of signal to Super this isn't working. They need to start moving him around the map. As bottom, Monet's gonna get gone on too. As Moo is very tanky, no roar available quite yet. The swap's gonna follow. There's your quick snowball. It's going towards Monet. They gotta try and keep him in close. The Hellbear clap. Nope. It's just gonna be the normal hit in from in flame. But they've got a large amount of minions here, both Necrobox plus the extra minions of Inflame, so they can focus on the Kyle. The ship will fly forward and limp. Well, he's just having a tossing good time. DDC holds him in position. The one way you can control the tiny at the moment in the meta. Wall him, storm him. But the rest of LFY is still in the neighborhood. Roars are out and the double damage beast must running out. Chessie trying to battle underneath his own fire, but Super keeps his distance and allows the stifling dagger to do the work. And it's complexity losing a couple of heroes, and that was a mushy to kill for Super. Yeah, he really needed something to get back into the game. And even with that kill, still considerably <laughs> low on the totem pole in terms of net worth. I mean, you're giggling now, but it's like... <laughs> he, he got like a full level and a half out of that, I so know it's fine. <laughs> he desperately needed that. He's still behind the Disruptor in levels. And DDC, for me anyways, is well known for being one of the poorer supports in games. Like, this guy is a hard five. And with his Bracer and a Wand... He's very close in net worth to his PA for a large portion of the game. And that's just to give you some context 
the hell under farm D is. Oh, there are ways back into this, and you can see LFY doing it, trying to match Complexity's aggression. But Complexity don't even need to be aggressive. They have limp moving through the stack, maybe not the most efficient, and now, now efficient. It's it's all efficient. Yeah, now he's going to take it with his tree. What the? <laughs> Dead corpse is floating into the air. Weird animations happening, but Tiny hey. is now very strong. Gotta remember, this game's eSports ready. So as he grabs another tree on his way out. Uh, aggressive move from LFY. They're going to three-man smoke inside their own jungle. The line being drawn to run almost vertical from where they are. But this is going to be a hard gank. They don't have any vision on the other side of the river. And now Complexity who... Like, both teams have a, have a ward watching the bottom rune. Yeah. But both teams are also smoked up, so no one's going to see anything. This is a huge fight. We talked about how complexity they want to run at you. It feels like LFY falling into this trap a little bit. Well, Taking these mid-game heroes, super. He has a TP, but how much support can he provide? Tiny Wisp at the ready right now. They're trying to make the full flank happen. LFI, though, they've got the high ground. They, they see him. That Observer was doing the work. The Courier comes out. Okay, Walrus punched out. That ended up having... It was the Necro Book. It was the Necro Book level 2. Would have been a significant pickup for them, Toby, but instead mm -hmm. now they're going to show that they're all down there with the courier kill going down that way. Yeah. They're instead going to make their way towards mid, which is a very nice trade for them. Oh, well, Lim's cleaning up the creep wave pretty quickly, and you got you got the catapult wave with you, so why not? But this may just end up being a, what, a tier 1 for tier 1 tower trade? Yeah. But of course, the mid tier 1 tower means quite a bit more. Like you're going to be incredibly happy with this. And they grab the courier. So net win for them. Yeah. And it's more and more time for Tiny to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Do you actually have a late game answer to the Tiny? Like with, with the amount of damage the PA can do and with all the Sons of Control Elfly has? Oh, Kyle. Oh, goodbye, Kyle. Sacrifice. And that is the synergy between the Hawk plus the Glimpse. No one's really going to be able to survive that. I think they do have decent answers, though. Like, PA gets, like, absolute six-slotted. Um, oftentimes, like, the problem with Tiny is, like, his high ground has been a little bit mediocre. But that's why the cool part of Complexity's lineup is that they've got this Meteor Hammer Tusk coming in on top of uh, this Jakiro. He's actually building it? Yeah. The, the build, I guess. It's like the, some, there's there's a lot of debate around the media hammer. It's like it's kind of cool. Like you can uh, charge people, hold them in place, media hammer them down as super <laughs> life. Does it get oh, easier for you? No, it does not. They even clean up the entire creep wave, so there's they, he had nothing to blink strike to. Yeah, and uh, he just keeps getting things chucked at his head. Life's really rough for him right now. He's under attack. God, you think he's having a good time, Toby? No, no, he's gonna be thinking right now. Complexity, a bunch of tosses. The rest of his team's kind of still doing okay, though. <laughs> like, they're they're doing all right. Oh, Complexity will do something about that right now. They're going to move down to the bottom lane. The tier 1 towers will start to fall like dominoes. You've got the liquid fire plus just the entire fight that can come from Complexity. How does LFY even get in position? You don't for that tier 1 tower. But do you draw a line? Uh, I don't know. Right now, I don't think that LFY can really take fights. So the game is just like scary for them as a whole. Like they, they don't feel comfortable uh, moving in anymore because this tiny is just like absolutely massive. And if they don't get the good combo off on them, and that usually means like the disruptor, then the fight just goes from like bad to worse. And mm. they can't, you can't afford to do this against complexity. Like give them this much map control because they will continue to run at you. Like they will take every fight that is afforded to them. Like they're one of the few teams that. I'd imagine defend most of their tier ones. Like even at this top area, you notice that move is set up with the meteor hammer. Yeah, he's gonna cast it from vision. Ah, just outside of it. Then Sean Ford, but uh, cleans up the creep wave. LFY full retreat. Yeah, and this is what I mean. They're one of the few teams that will defend that tower. Because most of the time, what ends up happening, Toby, as we saw in the previous two games, is uh, Radiant go for that tier 1 tower, and you just mirror them, and you yeah. go for the bottom tier. But because Complexity, they're so obsessed with their fighting style and being active on the map at all times, it's okay for them. Is Moog going to get swapped out? Take this well, get them to the silence, and this is more than enough to bring them down. Good storm. And this, this is space created for LFY, but Complexity is stacking so heavily. 
almost every time we we bounce into the into the complexity jungle is either watching tiny farm a triple stack or is watching the supports stacking yeah and they're trying to do this combo again glimpse with the hawk they see the wisp they're gonna see if they can bring him back oh. and that is enough time for oh, timing on that kick but here comes the stun oh. the avalanche space created a little bit more but now our foo is so low the hit from limp He's able to reach it. He's tossing the tree forward towards the Beastmaster. But I suppose if you take away the tree, the Blimpy can't really work with much more. And did you see his fists? Really? They reach that far out? Look at that stun duration barely oh, last. And again? Oh, support is there. Limp has a triple kill. Monet doesn't want anything to do with this. And now Super, Super. <laughs> what is he doing in here? Come on, man. You had a, you had a chance to not die. But he comes in to give Limp the last one for the ultra kill. Super's like, I know this feeling. <laughs> <He's just> like, <laughs> Don't leave me out of this. I want to be part of the cool kids. If we, if we all die, we all die together. His team's dying. He's like, guys, I know how to do this the best. <laughs> like, this is a familiar feeling. They're going to all go down. Limp picks himself up an ultra kill. I mean, there's not a whole lot to analyze, Toby. That is a huge swing. Well, you can watch it again. An analyze, the, analyze the fight once again. The kick looked okay, but look at that three-man toss stun. Radiance top tower has fallen. <sighs> I still cannot believe the range of limb. Like, okay, you, you can toss the tree here. And DDC thinks he's got a chance. Even turns for a second, but look, that punch. Look at the bench stun, how long it lasted. It literally lasted for like half a second. He shrugs oh. it off. We're back to life. The roar is out to Kiro. But yeah, he's only got 1,700 life to get through. Well, he's got like the one of the highest strain chains of a support here, and now you've run him as a core. Macropire, dual breath, Afu, Torrent. It does do a lot of work, and that's gonna allow Afu to tick out for Chessy. Glimpse a long way back. Z Freak! Oh, the storm is out. He'll actually have to separate it. Chessy will end up going down. Moon, Moon couldn't actually get enough control over on Monet and LFY. Super. Well, he's got the feeling of death from before. Now he's actually inflicting it. A double kill for him. The control is out. Moo is low. No way to retreat out this one. Monet will take that kill and complexity lose three. Tiny and Kunkka limping their way home. A little bit too unsuccessful as... I mean, they felt way too confident right there. The Tiny couldn't really get in work the space that he normally does. And thus far... Going to be an unsuccessful fight for them as LFY finally beat back. They, they, it, was, it was more needed than that one kill that Super got up on top lane. He has more net worth now than the Jakiro, so yay. Yes, that is. You got to take some sort of positives. And that, that was a huge swing for Super. Is that his Desolator too? Yeah, that's actually his full Desolator coming yeah, in the career. He courier. has like a reasonable amount of farm now. He's like eight minutes behind his timing, so he's like going to be pretty happy. Like the Deso. The power spike that you get from it is quite significant. The hero becomes quite a bit better as a result of it, and now... Are they creeping around Roshan? They're around it, they wanna... but it looks like it's more of a kill. Yeah. They have Necrobook plus, uh, plus a PA and Venge. Like, this is the reason why these heroes synergize very well, because you can't take these objectives very quickly. And they have a lot of artificial boost on them. The Beastmaster is going to give a lot of attack speed. As I say that, uh, <laughs> goodbye, Afu. Yeah, goodbye. It was nice knowing you. He's almost finished that assault Kuras on the tiny. Like it's a, it's the best thing in the world that he actually managed to pick up that desolator now because once that AC is up, they're thinking of just going in and smoking. You pop the necros. Yeah, they're going in. Does complexity have any idea that they don't have the best vision heroes and they look how quickly it goes down? Yeah. Thanks for knowing you, Roshan. First Roshan dead. And they're going to beat a hasty retreat. Kyle, though, is in ward vision. Oh. He's going to try to take it down with his dying breath. No, no dying breath. It's the torrent. Create space. That was weird. I thought LFI would take that fight. Yeah. They could have just uh, held him back. But so they got another objective instead. Like, they're moving towards the tier 2 tower up on top. But this will likely be a trade. Complexity. They can send their Jakiro in to spam it out with his macro pyre, bud. <laughs> I don't know if LFI really want to push this though. Like that Necro book is time like with it timing out. Like do you really have the strength in the fight? I'm not sure. It'll be close. This tiny is still a beast. This tiny is absolutely gonna reign supreme, but yep. uh, right now, Mabu looked like he wanted to set up for something at bottom, but Complex able to do so. Complexity unobliging on either front, either on the tier two tower up on top or by pressuring the bottom, they just go back to farming Limp up. He, he has finished that Assault Kuras now, and like, what a surprise, there is a triple stack. Yeah. And again, Sata's dying in the air. 
That's sad. At least you're, you're like a couple of steps closer to heaven if you do that, right? Yeah. But it's like you just see your friends like body floating in the air. That sucks. Ever, ever, you would die in the clouds, right? Who wants to be buried? Like if you'd be buried in a cloud and then buried in the ground, you'd you'd be buried in a cloud. Yeah, just like permanently float me. If I'm ever a billionaire, like I have crazy ideas, like that's the first thing I'm gonna do, Toby. So, so the first use of a hover platform is going to be to preserve Life. Blitz's corpse in the cloud. Weird ass topics. Anyways, I'll fight. <laughs> it's just the brains, man. Dyer's and they're looking for an opening. Kyle. Not visible for the moment, so they don't get the glimpse back on him. But LFY making the most out of this Aegis, the complexity refused to fight into. Take a tier two tower up on top of tier one tower in mid. They don't lose any of these building positions themselves, and this will start to cut into the complexity jungle. So all these stacks which have been coming their way, like maybe that's just when complexity switched the mindset. Let's stop farming, farming ancients. Let's start farming heroes. Yeah, and with that stack completed, I mean this tiny still continuing to scale. Gonna go for the evasion himself. Continues to hit hard. Still, uh, I think they're trying to slow down the pace of the game because you can't afford another unsuccessful fight like that. If you look at the net worth swing, the downside of having this like Tusk plus the Shakiro is like these heroes don't do too much in the way of like farming. They don't really scale as a core. You're meant to win all these mid game fights, and now you're starting to see LFI come back a little bit mm -hmm. and super who's had like the most miserable game ever all of a sudden has two items and toby he is ahead of yeah. almost all the cores in the game aside from the tiny he's he's gonna believe in the rng man that's 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 the place to go to he gets like two successful crits like that's the comeback yep get a lockdown on the bash just keep just keep building up and building up do you actually keep building into more damage however I or do you get something more like it's bkb yeah it's BKB. Oh. BKB. If Super wins this game, by the way, he's going to be the most hateful person. He, uh -huh. like, the amount of suffering he's had to go through this game, he he would deserve it, but deserve has nothing to do with it as complexity. Game it was firmly in their favor a second ago, but now it's a 1k lead back in favor of LFI. It still feels odd that, like, cause it, it feels like complexity have the unkillable tiny. Like, yeah. we haven't felt the effect of, of Z Freak in these fights, just working with Limp most of the time. I actually, I wonder actually in the last engagement if Z Freak's just been prioritizing trying to save whoever gets initiated on. Yeah, he is. But this tiny so far, like, okay, so you're 11 and 0. The downside though, Toby, is like, if you lose, if you die once on this tiny, it really feels like the game wins. Like, unless it's a five for one trade or something like that. But if you're losing Limp, you're probably losing the fight. And if that's the case, then the game kind of goes out the window. Because there are scaling cores on the side of LFI. Like, you have this PA who will continue to just get stronger and stronger. Same with his Ventral Spirit. This Beastmaster is very powerful right now. Whereas on the side of Complexity, who do you really have in favor of doing damage for you? You've got this Tiny and, well, that's about it. Yeah. But you, you willingly chose this. You willingly put a Chikiro on Tusker yes. as, as your one and three. So that you can take these fights. And that's why they want to try to take this mid fight. But it's scary for them because DDC is hiding. He's very good counter so far against L Complexity Zeros without any BKBs. Mm-hmm. And you never know when you're just going to get kicked, swapped, and critted down. It's... Uh, but, but, okay, so so how, how are they meant to help you take the fights? Like, right now you're losing the vision battle. So LFY seems to always know when complexity is coming at them. Yeah, the Hawks. Yeah, so how do you stop that? You don't have flying vision yourself. It's not like you're running around with a Night Stalker. So how does complexity actually get the fight they're looking for? I don't know, it's really difficult because it is a vision-based game and if you notice, Inflame is just popping the Necro Book. Uh, not even to take fights, just to scour things out. You notice that Moose cleaning them up right now, but this is meant to get rid of all these deep wards that Complexity could have potentially placed. And oh. so far they've been pretty successful. Where are those Complexity wards? They can't place any. They, they have one defend. They, okay, they have two defensive ones on the, on the bottom lane now. So the one which watches any kind of that movement over towards their shrine, and then the other one which watches towards the tier two tower. Yeah. Vision is vision at this point in the game. Like any sort of uh, boards that you can get out is going to be helpful for you to isolate out the map so that you can potentially set up for fights. Oh. That's the that's when you need to have the set like how like the average length of ward survives. Black City though, they're going to smoke up. They know there's no wards under here. They've got like eight sentries planted around that area, and move. Meteor hammers Radiant down that top area. Scanning. It's gonna go pretty quickly now as they scan through. 
quite find anything yet. For doesn't have that Aegis or BKB, he would be a really nice target for the complexity. They could get the high ground area and maybe force this Beastmaster up. He would also be a very big kill for them. He's in the neighborhood, but once again, in flames too good, just scouting out with his creeps. There goes your hawk, Kyle. Well, blink roll forward. It's in flame going in, and the storm is out perfectly. Kyle will take a ball off, but it's lift stunned up. You do have Chessy with a great back and position, but Monet with that fresh BKB. He's ready to fight once more. They glimpse back Lip and swapping him around. One more attack will do it over the wall. They do bring him down, but what is the cost now that you've lost the tiny? It is a two for two trade off, but LFY, they're going to keep chasing. Looking to keep fighting out. DD Sydney's done the glimpse. It just came back off cooldown, but the vision is not there. The Hawks too far away. Kyle just on the edge of the vision is able to TP successfully home. Still, look at that gold change. Normally, when you're the team that's ahead, the gold change uh, goes the other way when it's a two for two like that. But because the tiny was worth so much, Toby, we talked about it. When he goes down, the game feels really out of control because yeah i mean you're trading two for two sure but that's still an 11 and 0 tiny that you were resting a lot of hopes on yeah and now toby it looks like it's the other way remember we talked about it it's, if you lose with the tiny or if you win with the tiny the enemy team's like oh, why do we do that <laughs> it look a little bit silly but if you're able yeah. to beat it it opens up a lot of things for you in the draft and we're watching that jump in again and complexity you said they wanted the high ground but they were literally in a ditch yeah that they're they walked up into LFY, and that's such an awkward position for them to fight at. They didn't want to fight in that high ground area because there's a shrine so nearby, but walking up that area is also suicide without any vision. Yep. They, they, that's why they tried it. They put the sentry ward down. That's how that all began. It was it was Kyle moving forward to, to drop the sentry to try and get rid of LFY's vision, but the Hulk, the Hulk was there from in flame. Yeah, and now he's going to send East, try to clear up some more wards and some more vision. Doesn't find anything so far. He knows there's vision around the area, but unable to figure out quite where. As now Super almost has a BKB completed on himself. That's going to be the next massive swing for him. And Complexity struggling for answers right now. And we haven't really seen, like you talked about, very astutely pointed out, Z Freak and Limp haven't quite had that synergy quite yet. And yeah, they need to. But then again, like maybe you also you fly the point, like you lose Limp. And you lose the fight. What's he freak meant to do? Relocate him in aggressively behind the tower? Do you turn this into that split push game? So Z freak and limp just force out one lane. Then you come into the area where potentially you get initiated on by Beastmaster. And our, the disruptor. Our, our Fu is like his control is really good in that last fight. Okay, yeah, he died when jumping in, but he did what he had to do. He kept he kept three heroes from complexity stunned up and controlled while they put Chessie down. I think. Complexity most likely need a gem of their own right now. Like, the vision game just isn't going in their favor. They're steadily losing out. And the vision game matters so much in games like LB. Because the vision game enables your Wisp to be able to make these plays where they can make these aggressive relocates as Kyle jumps the ship. No pun intended. Shoots that X out. But it's only an illusion. Is <laughs> I'm fairly certain your pun was intended. It actually wasn't. I promise. I can make claims like that. Yeah, just like I'm not Mafia. Just trust me. I'll give it a shot. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. There is a Shivas though, on this uh, Kiro. Just like mm. steadily trying to get better. That that armor, that armor rises. Is at least nice. Like the sustainability from complexity is very very good. Yeah. Now there's a butterfly completed too on this tank, which is one of the better ways to deal with this. Mm-hmm. He's going to go for a BKB of his own, too, after that butterfly. So at least he's got an answer to DDC. Yeah, I didn't actually see, like, who was it that actually had the BKB in the fight? Because I thought for, for like, in the last fight, it was, um, it was PA who had it, but she's building into it. Oh, it was is. Okay, oh, it was Yeah, there he is. With the BKB up, snowball protection. Storm gonna be completely wasted with this. They snowball forward. Okay, not wasted. It lasts long enough The Chessie will go down. Mu could not save him, and now X marks spot Monet. They're gonna try and pull him back into the torrent limp, putting that damage to work with the four star. Monet Hurricane piking himself out again, oh, and Lim is again. in way too deep. LFY, they have the control, they have the magnetize, and they have a triple kill onto Super. 
super is slowly starting to become vindicated as the beginning of the game, one of the roughest early games that I've ever seen. And now he hits hard. 3,000 damage in that fight from him out of the 8.8k that was done from LFY. And now you give him, well, he'll take the cheese. He's that confident. He'll give the Agassi model to Monet. And they're really going to push the issue. 54 seconds without a tiny back. And that swing of the graph going very vertical. Yeah, 9k now for them as... I mean, it feels like they've just won like the last five fights in a row, and yet Complexity only down one one kill. But it doesn't matter because later game kills, of course, meaning a lot more as Horn's going to fly oh, out. The full stop into the swamp. Goodbye, Kyle. Both. Kunkka's rum isn't going to be able to save you there. Yeah. They could drink a toast to his corpse. Still 24 seconds down, but Cooper, he just wants to continue to move forward, and he's going to do so. <laughs> this is Sizely Tag and Bash on the z -freak. There's the RNG you're hoping for. The Storm is down once more. They'll lose the Tusker. Moon was oh, trying Christ. once again to go for that save, but damn DDC so quick on his Disruptor. The stuns are there. The mid racks is gone for complexity. Tiny might be back alive again, but LFY are here in force and they're here to stay. Yeah, the team play from them so far, so far has just been absolutely absurd. They're gonna grab a second set of racks with this. Too many heroes down on the side of complexity. The only thing that stops them from taking the third is that tier two tower and bottom is still up. They are gonna be incredibly satisfied with that. They build another 8k on top of their net worth lead that they had before. Might even rise after this. Brian gets taken to 19, a 9,000 gold swing in the span of like seconds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely absurd. And Likes they can just keep going anyway. Like, like move down, take the bottom shrine, take the tier two tower. Yeah, they're pink. You saw the line being drawn right now. Yeah. Like, move bottom, force the lane out, keep the pressure up. Super, he senses it. He's like, guys, this game is ours. Just continue to make our way down. They can't stop us anymore. Monet still has the Aegis on him, too. And he's getting steadily so farmed. They did, I think, uh, burn the cheese in the fight with on the PA, so she doesn't have that anymore. But with an Aegis, the Immortal on a, on, a, on a VS is already this strong, sure. Yeah, plus you got your Abyssal Blade completed. I mean, there is a BKB uh, finished on a Moo, but I'm not certain, like, how much of a difference this game it'll it, make. It doesn't seem to make that much anymore. Like, like you've reached the point now where it's the physical damage that's ripping you apart. The magical control is just locking the Tani down. He needs his own BKB, really, to function. Bottom lane, Monet's just gonna push out. Give him so much money. Doesn't he have enough already? So wait, is, is Tani actually moving in uh, to Shadowblade now? Yeah, I think he's trying to go for a Silver Edge for the oh. PA, and he needs his mobility, but it's still pretty rough considering the Necro books are almost always out on the side of Inflame. He just keeps popping them out with the Vision. They're going to make their way forward, maybe the Shrine. This entire map is owned by them now. Yeah. So no way to flash farm into those items like the Shadow Blade or the Silver Edge. No way to stack because you can't protect it. You're going to have to take a fight because Monet, he's got an Aegis. He's pinging forward. They want this. They're even going to grab the Shrine on their way in. They can be as greedy as they want. Get that 20k gold lead. Got to watch that timer on the Aegis of the Immortal. That's going to be the critical thing. You're going up high grounds. So, all right. So it's not that far off the expired. And that's why LFY going to go for the push, and they're going to essentially force Complexity into a do-or-die situation. This is your last Rax left. You absolutely cannot afford it. Take okay, well, that's one way to do it. Toss him in deep, keep the Snowball up. If you kill him closer towards that Tier 4 town, then you got a chance to kill him up after the Aegis Immortal is gone. But you've already got the other BS up and alive, fighting. Monet turns over towards Limp. The relocate saving him out. Forcing the BKB out from Monet, but they need something else here, Complexity. Both the BKBs have been popped super. Phantom strikes himself away with the Aegis gone. LFY will retreat with complexity. They wanted a kill from this. They didn't just want to make him retreat. They needed more. I think they're going to be okay with that, considering uh, they popped the Aegis and a lot of BKBs were extended. They didn't lose anything. Uh, they took some damage on the tower, but not the worst of situations for them. You got to look at the silver linings when you're in a situation like this. Like when you're this far behind, they'll take what you can get. Well, they can take that, but LFI continue, continue to take map control. 
Tani is barely holding the number one position of net worth. When it's 22,000 the advantage of LFY. Still very farmed. Just doesn't really have too many options left. As they're going to make their way down. If they lose this fight, you could conceivably see them GGing out. But they don't want to just get their tower uh, taken out slowly. They're, they're trying to make an aggressive move. LFY is so far back. Like, they're, they're actually at their tier 3 tower in the mid. Yeah, they're being incredibly disciplined about this. Like, okay, they're not showing on the map. Let's just hide. Our yeah. creeps, that's the benefit of having super mega creeps is that the creep wave always pushes in and will reveal locations anyway. Like, nobody defends that top area, then you know for a fact that they're smoked up. It becomes very, very clear. Oh, there's so much money on the VS. Mask of Madness, MKB, BKB, AC, plus the Hurricane Pike. It's, it's a beautiful day if, if you're a VS. She's incredibly farmed. Oh, limp. Can they get the initiation off? Boar is there, super. Monet needed to be the one in range, but they keep the vision up. Limps, Glimpse back out, they need a save. Zebra, he's preparing the relocate. Here he comes in, but yeah, okay, he'll pull him out in time. But the attack continues forward. Move, rolling boulders in, but it's super. In very, very deep with that double damage rune. Can't actually hit his mark, however. Nobody's Looking for the crits, right but now. not really getting him. And complexity, it looks like they're kind of trend this right now. Super starting to get low, like you said. What's pulled back and here comes out. Walrus punch, a kick is there from Anfu. Looking for a little bit extra control. Super jumping down, they just keep on this PA. Will she go down, the force up, down, and rolling ball to the pulling back in again. So Anfu will be the one to fall. Super barely alive, but alive nonetheless. That would have been such a big kill for them. Manages to evade everything else who has to trade his life like you said, but well worth it for them Complexity with another successful hold despite being down 20k and Toby Only takes a few of these if heroes that can deal with these creeps too with this Shakiro and this tiny They can just cleave their way through them. Mm-hmm I'm disappointed Z freak doesn't go for the eggs upgrade Yeah, the super eggs. Yeah, he went for the uh, 90 spirit hero I mean is it really that effective for him like he's got the does the ghost ship just like still pull you is that the upgrade of it uh that or jakiro defense the jakiro defense is kind of funny <laughs> the... you, you just buff him up for that short period of time just that, like the huge block <laughs> yeah it's like you, everything's you, on fire you, you may have needed it but you also need the damage onto the heroes of lfy so you can understand it husk I haven't really seen the Meteor Hammer synergy quite yet. It, he's just been using it as counter push more yeah, than anything else. Like in that way, it's kind of cute, but I mean, it was a pretty expensive purchase. Mm -hmm. Over uh, other potential control items or initiation items, things that would, which would have freed up space for the Tani to not get destroyed always. I'd imagine it looks a lot better when you're ahead and you can use it to like push high ground safely. Mm -hmm. But when you're behind like this, it just kind of feels like you get 12 strength, 12 <laughs> int, 4 HP regen out of it. Yeah, whoopity doo da. Complexity abating with Mu at the moment. It's a little too obvious for LFY to bite as they wait themselves. They got so much control. Halbert plus that Solar Crest on Inflame and everything else that he brings to the table. You notice, by the way, that Kyle, he's just stacking up on all the art armor items that he can for cheap. Like, he's got these, this buckler, and he's got this casual chainmail that I can't imagine he's got any aspirations of building into anything. It's just kind of there. It's the sacrifice, right? Like, just as long as he can survive long enough to get his combination off. Oh, mid lane, there's your initiation going in, and we'll see if he can survive. Kyle, the storm is out, but now he's going to live with Aurora. Into the back lines, move perfectly controlled, lost the gem of true side. They'll turn their attention over towards Chessy. At the same time, Lim. Super playing with him to relocate out. He'll do some work for Chessie. He's stranded on the rune spot. Monet will find him. And with three heroes down without buyback, it's about to be four. Unless some kind of trick from Z Freak. No. Not even all his talent can save him from that situation. Four heroes down. Three without buyback. This will look to be the game after LFY are able to take out Roshan once more. And this will now be third Roshan. So we'll add the refresher shot to the mix up too. Yeah. And the cool thing is that. And this could be double, double uh, Beastmaster everything. And Limp right now with his tree, 
his one tree, one tree man against the world. Nobody's got five packs. They can't help him out. He's just got to uh, got to hold on for dear life. Yep. Well, good luck, Limp. Here Thank he goes. God. No he pressure. Is instantly gonna get gone on <laughs> into the tree. Gets the avalanche and uh, bash. First hit. At least you get the swing back out, but it's uh, it's a straight five back. I is gonna work with him. They've got the fortification, so at least trying to blind LFY with the new animation lights. And the kick off oh, right the money. They're gonna get the storm down at least. And now how much life can Z Free give him? They're trying to glimpse him away. They push him out, they break the tether. There's a die back out from Tiny, and that is GG well played. LFY will take game one. After what was a bit of a rocky start, it was still all coming at Super. Yeah, Super had his vindication, he had his revenge. He had to weather that storm early on for his team to succeed. And that's what matters, Toby. Not the early game, not the mid game, not the late game, but getting the W. They got the W, man. They got the W. They got, they got a very, very strong... But hey, it was the rest of the lanes too, right? Like, the VS had a lot to work with too. As it seemed all round like LFY, yeah, early game goes wrong, but that's a good testament for the future in their tournament too. They did not 